Jewish people accept the oral law and the written law. Christians only accept the written law. Um, now, isn't that a contradiction? Because the written the written law is based on the vowel system of the oral law, which the Jewish people accept. Uh, okay, so here, here's here's the argument. Um, Judaism is based on written scripture and what's called the oral Torah of al Peh, which if you are an ultra-Orthodox Jew, you believe that on Mount Sinai, God not only gave uh, the written Torah to Moses, but he gave an oral interpretation and the principles through which it would be interpreted uh, through the generations uh, to Moses, who then passed it on to, uh, to Joshua, and then Joshua to the 70 elders, and the elders to the prophets, etc. Then, then right up to our day, it's passed on, and then ultimately, for various reasons, was put in writing in, in the Mishnah and Talmud, and that it continues to expand, uh, that there has to be an ongoing oral interpretation, and it would be said without the oral interpretation, you cannot understand the written word, okay? And in fact, uh, I discussed that very subject in volume five at length, but uh, that free CD you can take on the way out, or the rabbi's right, actually addresses that question. So this, this would be a challenge then. Uh, when the Hebrew Bible was written, it was written without vowels. If you've ever seen an Israeli newspaper, it doesn't have vowels, or an Israeli book, an Arabic, same thing. You know, Arabic newspaper or contemporary book won't have vowels. Have certain things called vowel letters, but not actually vowels. So all these little dots and squiggles and lines, these are the vowels that were, were put in later by those who were followers of the oral tradition. So therefore, if we accept the text with its vowels, aren't we accepting the oral tradition? And isn't that a hypocritical position? Um, the simple thing is, uh, I don't simply accept the vowels. The vowels are not inspired or infallible. Uh, or without error, and many times the vowels are incorrect. Uh, not only so, there are many different vocalizations. Uh, maybe you've heard of the Masoretic text. There's no such thing as the Masoretic text. There is the Masoretic textual tradition with thousands of minor variants. These scribes copy things in meticulous detail, but there are thousands of very minor variants, even in the vocalization, uh, and accentuation, etc. And there are various systems of vocalization. Uh, we, we know, uh, for example, uh, from the Dead Sea Scrolls, that certain readings are preserved which indicate that, that the vowels or the division of the letters in the Masoretic textual tradition are not the original or the best. Uh, that sometimes the this, this Septuagint and, and uh, biblical copies from Qumran will agree clearly and point to an error in the Masoretic textual tradition. So we use that as, as a guide, but uh, we don't rely on that on any level. And the, the interpretations of the oral law are filled with beauty and wisdom. There's much uh, that I respect in it, much of value in it. But do I, do I believe that there is an unbroken chain of tradition passed on from Moses on? No, that's, that's clearly a myth. Uh, and not only so, but there are times when the oral law explicitly contradicts the plain sense of the written. Um, Yeshua had conflict with some oral traditions. It was clear he, he was a rabbi or, or hailed as a rabbi. There was not official rabbinic ordination at that time. Uh, but it's clear that he lived a Jewish life and was, you know, went to synagogue, for example. That was based on our own tradition to have synagogue. That was not in Torah. And yet there are other traditions he differed with strongly and said that through your traditions, you have a way of making void the word of God. Christians can do the exact same thing, church tradition, that, that we can make void what's written in Scripture. So the ultimate thing, that which is reliable, that has been passed on, stood the test of time, is, is what's written in Scripture. And the best thing to do I always recommend this, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, that exhort us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will make your path straight. I remember quoting that to a yeshiva student once. I said, look, you can't just rely on your own mind. He said, that's right, I have to ask my rabbi. I said, I don't quite think that's what it means there. With all respect to your rabbi. Uh, so I, I encourage folks to go to scripture, pray the prayer of, of Psalm 119, open my eyes that I may behold wonders out of your Torah, and, and let God open our hearts and our minds to what's written uh, in, his, in his word. Uh, any other questions? Okay, yes sir. Uh, 